Which kind of practices are best to become a good sword fighter? Hello Himo friends and welcome to this new video. There are many different training activities which are useful to develop good sword fighting skills. But for the majority of today's Hima practitioners, time is limited by work, family and other important activities. So, which one is the best investment in terms of time while talking about HEMA training? And which ones are the way to go activities if time is limited? I'll try to answer to this question with my top 10 HEMA training activities. Na 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 By a fouls. So, number 10. Minimal or no gear practices. Minimal gear sparring or pair drills have their pros especially when it is summer and the training with the full gear on becomes a challenge. Minimal gear training is a way to train sword skills in a relaxed way, but uh, which has big limits, unfortunately. The control needed to not hurt the partner is a skill in and of itself that needs training. And uh, if this practice becomes too prominent in training, it may develop weird habits in terms of actions, timings and especially footwork which tends to get either lazy or too static, to make the practice safer, simply. Nevertheless, it is still a relevant tool which may climb some places in the top 10 while using safe practice tools like foam swords and similar playful simulators. Number 9. Test cutting. Test cutting is fun and teaches you really good skills, edge alignment, body structure and it is definitely a very good solo training activity. Also, it puts you in condition to use a real sword, which makes you understand that the sword is neutral and it may harm you if not wielded carefully, which is definitely a good teaching for a sword fighter. Unluckily, cutting practice steals a lot of time to be organized and it tends to be really expensive and uh, it is dependent on other side skills, such as uh, sharpening also. A very good training activity, but not for someone with few hours in a week to invest in sword fighting. Number 8. Non-specific cardio training. Be it jumping the rope or running, cardio is definitely a really useful training activity, which, if there is enough time left, should be done at least once or twice per week. The problem of uh, standard cardio training is that it doesn't translate perfectly into better breath management during a fight. Fencing actions have their own specific rhythm, varying one from another greatly. In fencing, moments of uh, quiet, low intensity movement and high intensity movement are all interconnected in many different ways. So while being useful, the time spent training cardio has a 100% impact in terms of getting you better at that specific cardio practice, of course, but has a lower percentage of impact on uh, your fighting skills compared to the time spent on this kind of practice. Number 7. Solo drills. Solo drills are or should be like shadow boxing but sword in hand. They are really good training activities as soon as what you practice has a deep and direct connection with the reality of your sparring activities. If this simple rule is not respected, solo drills drop down from number 7 to number 1000 in terms of usefulness and time efficiency. That said, they are great training tools as they let you train part of your sword skills alone. Unluckily, as any other solo training activity, it has big limits, and uh, their being highly skill dependent makes them sit only at place 7 on this list. Number 6. Hand-high coordination and rhythm exercises. There are plenty of exercises which HEMA sometimes steals from Olympic fencing training that are highly valuable to develop a good rhythm and the conditioning skills and most of them are solo exercises. This kind of practices generally requires cheap tools, most of the time a simple tennis ball and because of this they can be done almost everywhere at any time. These motivations alone make them being on this list at a relatively high tier. The fact that a far lower level of awareness is needed to obtain good results from these exercises compared to solo drills makes them sit one place over them. 
It is important to know that competitive level Olympic fencers need to do these exercises also to not overstress their arms with too much weapon handling and to vary their practice during the long days of training sessions. How much these two aspects are prominent in their diffusion is beyond my knowledge. Number 5. Technical pair drills. Technical pair drills are pretty good tools to invest your time in. They help you develop your technical skills pretty well and they give you a direct feedback if something is going wrong. Pair drills constitute the backbone of the training routines of the majority of the HEMA clubs around the world. Unfortunately, despite everything I said till now, they are still far from the podium because they may be influenced by many factors. The lack of experience of one of the two training partners, their excessive laziness, kindness, competitiveness and others may vary the outcome of an exercise dramatically, transforming it, in the worst case scenario, from time well spent into a waste of time. Number 4. Footwork training. Footwork training is definitely the best kind of fencing related solo training activity which gives you the most compared to the time spent doing it. It can also be done with a variety of different objectives, improving the quality and the form of your movements by practicing it slowly, creating footwork combinations with different rhythms to approach the opponent in a sneaky way, or doing it at high intensity to train speed and, uh, why not, even cardio. Long story short, training footwork is always time well spent. Number 3. Strength conditioning. Admittedly, it took me some time to decide what to put on the podium between strength conditioning and the footwork, but I went for strength conditioning for a simple motivation. The stronger you are, the easier it is to learn footwork properly. But it takes a really long time to build up length strength by only doing footwork. Strength conditioning is always time well spent. It makes every other activity on this list easier, more effective and time efficient. A really important part of training. Number 2. Frontal lessons with the instructor. Now, this is simply the evolution of periodries, which increases its effectiveness in a dramatic way. It doesn't matter the level of the instructor, even a really basic frontal lesson is better than a periodrill. The motivation behind this is that the instructor is focused in making you land the action in a specific way, while recreating some error to exploit, some goal to achieve or some problem to solve, and taking care into making it as close to reality as possible in the meantime. Frontal lessons with the instructor are not accessible to everyone right now, as they require specific instructor skills not easy to access for every instructor by now but definitely one of the best way to invest your time as a trainee, while possible. And at number one, of course, we find sparring. There is no better way to train than to simulate a fight with the best approximation possible, and that is exactly what sparring is all about. But its purpose doesn't stop here. Sparring may be used to train specific tactical skills simply by adding specific rule sets limitation to target areas or to the valid technical repertoire. The addition of points, like during a tournament simulation, moves the attention of the fencer toward the big picture of the match, while the absence of any kind of score makes the fencer think more about the single action. All these tools may be used to develop the different qualities of the fencer, and this makes every sparring activity being the most time efficient and the useful training activity among all. Very good people, I hope you found the video useful, remember to check my Patreon page if you want to support my work and to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and uh, as always, see you next time.